Greetings my fellow monkey brains, you're on the Monkey Electronic channel. Today we're going to take a look at the uh, Auto Transformer Boost Converter, which is a simple uh, modification to the normal boost converter. Uh, here on the left I've drawn the normal boost converter, which uh, consists of the normal components, the inductor, diode, MOSFET, capacitor and output resistor. And on the right hand side I've drawn this modification which uh, includes an auto transformer. Uh, an auto transformer is basically any transformer which has two windings in inductive relation and some type of center tap. The reason that we would like to make this modification is because the normal boost converter uh, can suffer uh, in terms of efficiency when you want to get a high voltage gain out of it. Uh, say for instance more than four or five or six times the voltage gain. So for example if uh, I'm using a normal boost converter and I have an input voltage of 24 volts but I want an output voltage of 100 volts then that's a gain of four, right? So at that gain, gain a voltage gain of four, uh, you'll probably get some good efficiencies with the boost converter. But if you want a voltage gain at five, six, seven or eight times the input voltage and you try to get that from a normal boost converter, you'll probably find that the efficiency of the device is starting to fall off considerably. And uh, we can solve that by, uh, by adding this simple modification of an auto transformer. So how does the circuit work in this case? Well, it works much the same way as the normal boost converter. By the way, if you don't know how a boost converter works, you can uh, watch my previous video. I'll link it up above. But the, the modification works in this way. When the switch opens, current is pulled down the primary winding and that builds a magnetic field in the core. During this, when the switch is on, there is no current in the secondary because the diode is blocking it. Then when the switch turns off, the current through the switch stops and the magnetic field in the core wants to collapse. When it collapses because of induction, it causes current to flow through the secondary from the source down to this point, making the voltage here at the, uh, at the drain of the MOSFET go high. And that's the same as the boost converter when the switch turns off. But because of induction, the secondary now wants to pull current in this direction, which it does so. So it pulls it from the drain through the diode to the load. But... Um, because the current is flowing in this path now, we now get uh, the voltage that we get at the output is the sum of the voltage across the two windings. So we get double the voltage that we would do compared to the normal boost converter, all things being equal. So that's the way it works. It's quite basic and uh, we'll just put it together on the bench and take a look at the waveforms. Okay, I've connected up all of the various uh, shenanigans here on the bench. This, all of this circuitry on this board is just generating a pulse here to this MOSFET. Um, I have two voltage probes, yellow and the red one, connected to uh, the drain of the MOSFET here and the other probe is connected to the uh, output diode just before it. Uh, and I have two current probes. One current probe, the green one, is looking at the total amount of current which is going through the inductor. And the other current probe, the blue one, is looking at the current which is going through the MOSFET switch only. So here's the inductor with two windings. It's a metal iron powder core uh, from eBay. And uh, here's the output uh, resistor, it's 820 ohms. And uh, here's the smoothing capacitor on the end, it's uh, 250 volts and 20 microfarads. So uh, yeah, let's connect it up, see what happens. Okay, so now we're ready to apply some power. I've set the voltage at 11 volts with a limitation of 300 milliamps just for safety. It's not my safety, of course, it's the safety of the switch. Uh, so let's turn on. Okay. I'll just freeze the waveforms then, turn off the power so my MOSFET doesn't uh, catch fire. So if we look at the uh, waveforms here, the yellow trace is again the voltage at the drain of the MOSFET, so when the MOSFET switch is on, that voltage goes to zero. Uh, when the switch is on, the blue trace shows that there's current coming through the, uh, through the inductor and through the switch, and it's ramping up linearly, nice and linearly, which is good. 
Um, now the pink trace is the uh, voltage at the diode, at the output diode, after all of the inductance. And you can see that when the switch turns on, that voltage actually goes negative, which is slightly st strange. So why does it go negative? Well, earlier I said that the current in the secondary, while the switch is on, does not flow because the diode is blocking it. That's not exactly correct. Um, diodes have a very, very small capacitance which can allow some current to flow, uh, temporarily at least. But what really is happening here is because the current is flowing in the uh, primary and through the uh, MOSFET, it's actually causing induction in the secondary winding and sucking charge out of the secondary winding and shoving it down to the ground. And because it's doing that, the, uh, the, the free end or the end of the inductor, which is close to the diode, goes negative. So that's why this uh, trace is going negative here. Now the uh, green trace is the total amount of current which is passing through the inductor. And while the switch is on, and the current is passing through the inductor and through the switch, that means that while the switch is on, the blue trace and the green trace should be the same, and they are the same. I'm not sure if you can see on the video, but there's a very slight difference in the gradient. That is because of the current for the green and blue trace. And that is because these are homemade current probes and they may not be exactly the same, but that doesn't matter because we're not taking absolute measurements here. We're only uh, looking at relative measurements, meaning changes. So it's okay. But the interesting and strange thing about the uh, current, the total current in the inductor, the green one, is that when the switch turns off, the current drops to half and, and then discharges to zero. Now that's a little bit strange. One normally would expect, as we saw in the boost converter in the previous video, that current starts um, uh, where it left off uh, when the switch closes and, and ramps down from here, but instead it drops to half and then goes down to there. So why is it doing that? The answer is that um, when the switch turns off, current is allowed to flow in the secondary. What it means is that, okay, well, well, let's say that when the switch is turned on, then current is only flowing in the primary. It means that the inductance of the inductor depends only on the primary winding. But when the switch turns off and current is allowed to flow in the secondary, suddenly the inductance of the, uh, of the inductor doubles because now I have double the windings. Uh, my windings are one to one ratio, by the way. So when the switch off turns off, I'll get double the windings, and because such, I get double the voltage. But there's only the same amount of energy in the in the inductor uh, present when it was when the switch was turned on as to when it's turned off. So because I've doubled the voltage, the current has halved. You see, so that is why the current during the discharge drops by half and then ramps down. It's because the voltage is doubled. The power, the energy is the same. The voltage has doubled. The current has to half. Okay. So that's why the current is half there. Now, another thing that you can glean from looking at these uh, traces is the voltage which you would get if you were just running a normal boost converter in this, with all of these components, with this on time and everything like that. And that is the value of the yellow trace here because this is the voltage of the, at the drain of the MOSFET. So this is the voltage which I would normally get. By the way, both the yellow and the pink traces are both set at 20 volt per, div per division. But the yellow trace here at the top, this top flat bit is the voltage which I would get if I was running a normal DC to DC boost converter with only one winding. But because I'm using an auto transformer instead of this voltage, which is about 22, 23 volts, I'm getting 40 volts at the output. And by the way, the amount of power which it would pull is, would be exactly the same because the on time is the same. And when it's switched on, there's only one wire, there's only one inductor conducting. I mean, one wire, one winding of the inductor conducting. And so the amount of power which it would pull is exactly the same.
and therefore the efficiency is the same. So here I'm running at the exact same efficiency as I would for a normal DC to DC boost converter, but I'm getting double the voltage and half the current for the same efficiency, same power. So here, when the switch turns off, we can see all the normal uh, high frequency ringing. That's just the parasitic inductance and capacitances because the board is, uh, you know, it's not a professional board. And here we can see this lower frequency ringing taking place. Again, as I explained in my previous video, this is because when the, when the inductor has finished discharging, there is not enough energy left in the inductor to make the diode switch on. So the diode switch is off and the current stops, but there is still a residual amount of energy left over in the inductor. And that is enough to make the in inductor ring like that. Okay, you can see that ringing there. What you'll often see when you look at this ringing on the scope is that it, it's not a perfect sine wave. Over here at the end, it is a perfect sine wave. But if you look at the beginning here at the bottom there, this pink curve and the yellow curve, it looks like it's been cut off. And it has been cut off because when the voltage goes low there, the body diode in the MOSFET is turning on. That's why it clips the voltage and doesn't let it go negative here. That's something to watch out for because if you put a MOSFET in, and you're causing large oscillation, you have large oscillations here, it could be pulling a significant amount of current through the body diode of your MOSFET, and it could damage your MOSFET. So that's something to look at, look, watch out for. So uh, what I'm gonna do next is probably turn up the power and see what voltage we can get and measure the efficiency and make sure it's not crap. Okay, I've changed the settings on a scope to 50 volts per division because uh, we're going to get a bit higher voltages here and I've changed the uh, power supply to 12 volts and a limitation of 4 amps so we switch on and then let's increase the frequency pulse repetition rate okay our pulse width is dropping there so let me increase that Okay, four watts, five watts, six watts, six and a half, seven watts, ten watts, I think I can smell the MOSFET now, this is 14 watts, so let me pause it, switch off. Yes, the MOSFET is red hot, I can't touch it. So that was a roughly 14 or 15 watts, and the red trace being 50 volts per division was almost at 100 volts now. Okay, so I've changed the settings again now. Um, I have to do it uh, quickly because the MOSFET is getting very, very hot, so I'll just switch on the power supply, quickly freeze the waveforms on the scope, and then calculate the efficiency of the whole thing. So I'm putting about 14.9 watts. Okay, so the input power is 14.9 watts. And the output voltage is the uh, red trace, which is, I've put the markers there already, and they show 99 volts. So we just calculate that at the moment. So 99 volts minus 0 0.6 because of the voltage drop of the diode which is 98.4 squared divided by the uh, resistance of the resistor which is 820 ohms that gives me 11.8 watts of the output I divide that by the input power which is 14.9 watts we get an efficiency of 79% 79% I think that's a pretty decent efficiency, basic, uh, because uh, uh, being that uh, this, you know, this is not professional, and uh, as you can see, and uh, all the components are just thrown together here on on the bench. Seventy nine percent efficiency is is fine by me. Uh, if I was to make this as uh, for for a boost converter for home use for projects and uh, experimentation, which I'm going to do, that's just fine. 
So there you go, I've shown you just a simple way to increase if you're struggling to get high voltages. The boost converter is a very simple circuit and I've shown you how you can simply increase the voltage that you get from it by adding an auto transformer and still maintain those high efficiencies. So if you like this video, you know you can help the channel by using the links below. If you have any questions, feel free to post, I'll try to answer them. Thanks again, I'll see you next time.